welcome to Git plugin or the Git credentials binding uh, Google Summer of Code project hour project for Jenkins. This is office hours and mentoring. So remember, we abide by the Google Summer, the Jenkins project code of conduct. It's the 25th of May. Harshit, do you have questions that you wanted to open with or any progress you wanted to share? Um, should I share the demo that I showed the, I mean, that I shared in the Gitter chat? That would be great if you're willing. That would be wonderful because then we have the benefit of a recording of it that we can point others to. Okay. And uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm interrupting. I just wanted to say that Matthew, you, we usually uh, share our screen for the uh, with the uh, doc we have, right? So that we have a context of what we're going to talk about. Right, and I didn't do that. Let me get that doc ready. Well, Harshit, you can start sharing your your uh, screen and I'll get the doc ready to be sure we've got a copy of the note. It's visible, I guess. Yes, sir. So, yes, so this looks is, great. Yeah, so I've created demo one. This is the pipeline job. And uh, so first I would like to discuss the script. So, so yeah, like I shared about the that, that concern I told told you on the chat about the SH command. So instead of using git clone, I used git step to clone and fetch so that uh, the user don't get any error. And also I would like like the repository I'm cloning. Is this a private repo, Harshit? Because I was able, I was trying yeah. to access this. Okay. Yeah, this is a private. I'm not signed in in this PC, but uh, I can show you in this one for one second. Yeah, and and private repo is a perfect check, so that's an excellent choice. Hmm. Yeah, I definitely agree on that. Thanks. I have to stop it, stop the share, and I can share from here now. Yep. And yeah, so this is a private repo. So you see, I'm working on this, so I will be pushing my changes to this repo. The font is visible, is, or is it too small? Yeah, it's okay for me. Uh, can anyone else see? Yeah, very readable. Okay, so in this step, uh, I am adding the. I'm first removing the tags because if the tag already exists, it shows an error. So I have to first remove the tag if it already exists. Then I have to add. And then I will clone any changes or fetch them. Then I will push the push push the changes, or you can say push the tag in the repo. And then I'm creating a like a temporary file so that we know that it's working. And then I'm pushing all the changes. So let me start it.
and oh they already exist the tag already exists already deleted it that already shows that that message fatal tag already exists oh let's see no that's on the git tag operation okay so I mean, you could you could randomize that tag or put a yeah there there are shell commands that will insert um, various various forms of randomization to make it probably unique if you need to do that. Oh no, that's working. So I'll fetch the changes that have been made, then it start, then it's work. So it's successful. I can also show the repository once again. These are the changes. It was done one minute ago. So I've made, I'm alive. I have done this uh, till the, I have not implemented the SSH right now, but I'm using the use, with user name and password using git as ask pass environment variable. And could you show us the two tags on the right hand side under the releases so that we can see that 2.0 was pushed? Hmm. Yes, there it is, pushed two minutes ago. I also wanted to know, like, uh, is JGit, um, JGit in the scope of the project, or we will be using only Git? Um, only using Git. So, good question. So, let me put a note on that. So, uh, what about JGit? And I'm going to share my screen now so that we can see what's being typed. Okay, share screen. Make it big enough to read. Okay, so intentionally only using command line git. Um, conceptually, and I say it only conceptually, conceptually, a, a sufficiently sophisticated programmer um, pipeline could invoke jgit from inside the the uh, from inside the pipeline if they were willing to if willing to use what is it the um, to to allow access uh, but they should not don't do that is the correct answer Command line Git is the definitive implementation. It's the reference implementation. It's the one that has support for large files. It's the one that has support for the most options, has support for best support for submodules. All those things are, are reasons to stay away from JGit. Now we could ask Rishab on his experiences with JGit last year. Yeah. 
and um, so so my my experience with jagged was particularly my interest with jagged was particularly uh, in perspective of its performance as compared to command line git and um, yes uh, and uh, do we want to share what we yeah okay so we we saw that yeah jagged was faster for smaller repositories and and, and we put that estimate around uh, for repositories less than 50 MB, JGit was performing better than command line git. But after that, command line git wins big time. Right. So Harshu, did, did you get your, were there other questions you had needed to ask that I didn't get into the notes? Um, I just wanted to know the project structure is like we will be implementing the Git credential binding in the Git client plugin only. And I don't want to implement it in the Git plugin now. Because I think Git client plugin could provide some features or features of functionality that will be benefit for this implementation. That, that makes sense to me. Any objections from the other mentors? I did I, did I capture me. that observation correctly? Yeah. I mean, like we cannot reuse the code. I know, like the the I pointed in that the chat. We cannot reuse the code. We can use the functionality only, like the functions. Like there is an author is. I mean, there is a function in that which shows which version of Git we are using. That we can ah. use, but we cannot use the code directly, because the code has to be modified, uh, between them. Like Git client plugin uses the I like the freestyle job only it's like it's based on that the credential binding is based on totally on the pipeline aspect that makes sense at least to me that's that's very reasonable so you may get some some minor benefit by all means use that benefit that's great So, so the, the prototype you sh showed is using username, password, and it's working on Linux, right? Yeah, Linux Ubuntu, a Debian. I okay. have tested on uh, CentOS for Red Hat and, uh, and um, Windows. Did you say you have tested on Windows? I have to, I have to set up the, uh, also I, like I wanted to set up a, in like a proper development environment. Like I don't want to install too many VMs or do, dual boot my PC. So I was like in scope, like, so like you can guide me on that. Well, so, so if you're willing to use, good question, if you're willing to use ci.jenkins.io, to use ci.jenkins.io, it has access to, has Windows and Linux, both naturally available for pull requests. Um, if you'd like, um, you want access to a wider range of um, operating systems and versions, Uh, Mark has a cluster with many different OSs and versions that I could give you access to if that would help. Mark is a supercomputer in his house. 
Sorry, say that again, Rishab. I missed it. No, I was just, I was just joking that you have a supercomputer in your house. <laughs> okay. And um, I think that would generally be available if we did, if he did want to use that. Um, I also want to make sure that we're being kind to Mark and uh, his uh, <laughs> his time off. Yeah, yeah, that'll be that'll continue to be available even when I'm off, and unless okay. it, if it shuts itself down, I won't be there to restart it. But if it's still okay. running, I could certainly give give access. The for me, the the first target, ci.jenkins.io is available now, and a pull request will will let you use that infrastructure. And if that I it remember, makes sense. I'm sorry, I'm just saying that it makes sense to test there. Because you get both of the environments easily. Right. Yeah. Well, and, and the, the now the if you need to do diagnosis, Harshit, for that, you'll need a local copy of Windows, uh, either on a virtual machine or a physical machine. Do you have access to Windows that you can use to do checks like that? Mm, yeah, I have dual boot in the PC. I have both Windows and Ubuntu. Okay, all right. Actually, I got a question for you, Mark. Um, your, your, I think you have an IBM and PowerPC variant and things like that. Do you typically encounter any compatibility issues there for, for these kinds of things, or do you think we'll be marginally safe? I, I haven't seen any compatibility issues there because those two machines are both running Linux variants. And now I know of some compatibility issues for people who run Jenkins agents on S390 mainframes using the IBM operating system rather than using Linux. Okay. But yeah. I don't have access to one of those and that it's so, it's so obscure for me that I don't worry about it. Okay, cool. I figured those were all Linux, but uh, figured I'd ask. I was not very... Thanks. Yeah, yeah, good, good point. So, so Harshit, the things that are included there is AMD sixty four, ARM thirty two, ARM sixty four, uh, PPC sixty four LE, S three ninety X. That's the chips, and then OSs. There's CentOS, Debian. Uh, FreeBSD, OpenBSD, uh, Windows, Ubuntu, and I've probably missed one. You're gonna need to add Gen two and Slackware. You know, I haven't, I haven't gone that that to that level yet. They, I, I've not had any bug reports from users on those platforms. Whereas ha I have had bug reports from users on these others. Oh. Yeah, so, so if certainly before, before the project's done, assuming I'm back, I will run your code on, in my environment to be sure that, that it, it doesn't surprise us, but I don't think you need to worry about that initially, Harsha, just be aware that, yes, there are interesting variants of command line Git that we have to test, like the ancient command line Git 1.8 on CentOS. So Harshit, you've you've got to check on Windows, and then is that part now? Do you think ready for your design document? Are you ready to describe? Hey, this is how we're going to approach this when we start coding. When coding begins. Um, yeah, I need to go through the code once more. Then I will be sure that I'm know what I'm doing. Okay. Also, in the previous meeting, we like you said in the previous meeting, and I missed something, Harshit. Could you say that again? Yeah, one second. I'm just. Uh, 
I don't know. I just missed it. So in the previous meeting, we were just want were curious about how this will work in a freestyle job. Uh, how the credential, I uh, mean, credential binding plugin is used in freestyle job, and how the functionality that I'm providing could be used in that. So can I share my screen? Yes, go ahead and share. So, yeah. so oh, this is proof really that Justin was right. Okay, yeah, when you click it, what happens? Right. Yeah, it works. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it will work. Actually, there is no in doubt in that, but I don't want the user to interact with this because the Git plugin already provides so much that this I don't want this now. Well, except that inevitably, when I've told myself, "Oh, I don't need that," um, some Jenkins user has proven me catastrophically and completely wrong. And, but I don't know what this means still. I'm not sure how this will work because what if you choose to add a build step now that is a, is a, uh, a batch file? How does this binding know that it's contributing to a batch file? Rather, you know, I, that's, a, that's a piece that I'm not sure how this is actually going to work. I've never used yeah. it. So I, I don't know how it will actually work. I, I assume it it must work with the environment variables that you say it's going to, that it says it's going to pass. I just don't quite know how. Well, you can execute the shell in this. I mean, if you have to execute bash command then in here, then it will, I guess it will work. I'm not tested so it on Windows. If right you, now. if you click the list of available environment variables down below, and open that up in a new page. What does it tell us? Does it include? Oh, that's I. Well, is that just the standard items? I don't see any credential kind of thing in there yet. Okay. If I recall correctly, I think it runs through all the plugin environment variables that that you have. I so don't this remember I would pick up credential binding. It okay. Um, and so in the binding setting that's up above, there are two checkboxes. One seems to say, uh, what was it? It was saying something like specific credentials or specific parameter. Oh, oh, I see. Okay, so that that lets you, yeah. Okay, so back to specific credentials. So what I don't understand is how do how do you define what the bindings will be? What what the environment variable is that's bound there? And the fi interesting, I, I I I still don't understand this, but Justin, I suspect, can help you with it and. We go forward. I, I do wonder if you just just for interest, would you be willing to do an experiment? You're running on Linux, right? Yeah. So delete the execute Windows batch command and add an execute shell. And in that shell, put env pipe to sort. I'd like to know what environment variables are are made available. Now save it and run it. And let's see if it will give us something that looks like a link to the, the, that credential. Perfect. I'm trying to absorb as much of Mark's brain while he's still, still with us. Before. Sorry, am I, am I distracting? I apologize if this no, is not. No, this is great. Okay, look, git underscore ask pass equals it's masked. Boom. Right, right. Which, which we would expect it to be masked because it's probably not very happy that we're trying to display that thing. Yeah. But it says that, okay, if you scroll further down, is there anything else like that? 
So now what you could do, cause, cause that's going to point to the file that you're writing out, right? I think so. Where are we currently writing this out to? I yeah, guess, so the unmasked value. So we could we could turn off screen sharing so that so that Harshit's password is not displayed. And then you could do a, a right after right before the ENV, you could do an echo dollar sign open square bracket or open curly brace SSH under git, what was it? Git SSH ask pass close so that you could see have it output the name of that file. I think it'll mask that too. Oh, oh, it's but try it's, it. being, it's being sophisticated, huh? But but it the the idea is even with freestyle, you've shown that hey, it definitely is injecting that variable. So what you could do is add that echo statement, and then you could try and do uh, git fetch. Oh right, right. Yeah, it will work. It will work. I mean, my, oh, so you've already confirmed it works. Tested. No, I don't, but I'm 95% sure it will work. I am not tested even, but I am sure it will work. But I can test it right now. And Mark, since this wasn't, sorry, while you're testing this hard shit, I thought I'd ask Mark a question, but please interrupt uh, if you'd like. Um, I would assume that this would be probably lower on the priority list since it wasn't necessarily initially in scope. Is that a fair assessment? Yes, absolutely. Cool. I think if we, if we, if we, if Harshit's able to implement username, password, and um, private key for bat, PowerShell, and CLI, and SH, that's in pipeline, that's already that's already achieved what I had envisioned as the objectives, particularly then the challenge of testing it in all the configurations, assuring it works, um, automation of the tests. This is a particularly challenging area for test automation because doing authenticated things in test automation can't be, you can't share credentials to real GitHub repositories. So you may have significant work to write automated tests for this Harshit. Now in the Git yeah. client plugin, there is a framework that I used for test automation that we could, for credential based test automation that we could discuss. I don't know if it's actually something you want to consider using that thing because it was sort of an ugly, dirty trick that I used that only worked on my local environment and I accepted it was a dirty trick. There, I'm sure there are much better ways to test credentials than what the technique I used. Mine was just that it worked for me. And you just use that locally? Um, that doesn't work on like ci.jenkins.io? Right. What it did is it relied on a specific file in a specific location. And if it found the contents of credentials in that specific location, it would iterate over them and use them for tests. Gotcha. So it was cool. a, it was a, a very dirty technique knowing that, Hey, Mark keeps sensitive files in his dot SSH directory. So Harshi, you've you've your it looks like your prototype's working well with username password. Are there have you had any chance to explore private key? Uh, no, I have not explored it yet. But I have done it before. I did I like I have message in the chat once, like I have figured out we could use the bouncy castle API for that. Very good. Okay.
So then I guess a question from, from me to you is, as part of your design document, do you want to give some thought to how will you test this um, in, in an environment that is, that is as public as ci.jenkins.io is, where you can't put your credentials into it. You have to find some other way to do it. that um, if I understood correctly, Mark, that means that Harshit would have to um, uh, add some new functionalities to the already existing testing framework to automate the test cases for credentials granting. And that is considerably work, apart from the development work he's going to have. I would think so. Either that or, okay, we could take the, the classic approach that was used in the Git, Git, Git plugin originally, where for the first 18 months of the life of the Git plugin, there were zero automated tests. But that's, that would make me very uncomfortable having no automated tests for this new capability. So how, so is, is that something we should explore during this phase or during the community volume phase? That how much can be covered for the, the coding phases? And if, if that's the case, then uh, could we drop the audio test case? I'm not sure if uh, you would like that. Yeah, good point. So I uh, one more question I had uh, with this was that, uh, so currently Harshit is exploring using a password credentials. And he's, he's built a prototype and he's uh, investigating for this. So do we want him to explore both of the bindings and how they could potentially work and you know, have a working prototype during the community bonding phase only so that he has a good sense of what challenges he's going to face for the two months uh, for the coding phases. And, uh, and apart from that, also, if it's possible, he could look at the testing framework. Um, uh, maybe he could look at the existing way you've tried to uh, automate the credential uh, test cases where you have to uh, consider credentials as well. And then he could maybe uh, give us uh, an estimate on how things could go further. Because Good I think that, that, seems, that seems like a uh, important, if we're not sure how uh, we're going to test it, then the, the life cycle of pushing it to production becomes, uh, how, how do we plan that we're, when we're going to let's say, have our first binding uh, in place. Good, yes. And passphrase protected, I think was another one, wasn't it, Harshid? And I believe you had done some work on passphrase, passphrase protected private keys as well? Yeah. So Rishab, I think you're right that that is, your question is much more important than whether or not we get to tests. Oh, oh, and that's a good one. Justin's got a good point. Could we, is there anything we could borrow from the credentials binding plugin? Because it, it probably is doing some form of credentials tests, right? Yeah, and I wonder, I don't know if the maintainers of that lurk somewhere uh, where we could ask them if we can't find that ourselves, but I'm sure we can, figure that out too, uh, in terms of like, those folks lurk anywhere. Good. And they may, they may actually have opinions on design too. Um, you know, if we, once we have a design document, so. Right. 
also i, I had one more question uh, when we uh, when we're talking about releasing uh, git credentials binding uh, will we uh, is it necessary for us to release both of the bindings at the same time or are we we willing to first release username password and then go iteratively work on um, ssh binding too well, that's a very necessary? good question great Michelle. question Michelle. should we should we plan to release one binding all the way to production as soon as possible? That's that's a that I think is a brilliant idea to say, hey, look, here it is. Let's get it out there and get feedback on it. And I have an administrative question. That's a follow up to that one. Uh, Mr. Mark, do you have uh, backup maintainers who you would want to uh, kind of usher something like that through? Or is that something that would be better to like, uh, you know, if you're out for surgery during this time, then we try and get this ready for you for when you're back. No, no, I think we we do have backup maintainers. So let's let's okay. take a look at those. Um, so Bobby Sandal. Uh, I believe Oleg is also a, a valid right. backup. So let's, I know Bobby Sando and I know that, let, let, let's just look at the list. There's a reason why we did this. So get client plugin, who are the maintainers? And Bobby, okay. Manuel Ramon Leon. So yes, so Ramon Leon. Uh, okay, so primarily go with those folks. Uh, and, and if either of them cannot, then there, are, I think there are even several others. Those two are designated okay. maintainers that I got agreement from their, uh, their, that they're willing to be maintainers. Okay, great. Yeah, I saw there was like maybe another person on the list too, but I also wanted to figure out how to ask the question explicitly, so. Oh, oh yes, Olivier, you're right. And Olivier okay. is also also willing. Yeah, and he's... Okay. So we can assume that these lists are, are good. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. And I had I had definitely confirmed with all three of those people that they were willing. Awesome. Now Olivier is an interesting one because he's based in Australia. We might um, he may even respond and be interested in being a mentor. Don't know. He's he's got he's a, a jetty project maintainer, all sorts of projects he does, so he may not be available. Cool. Okay, so so Harshit, what do you think of that idea? Um, like beta testing. Like we are talking about the Rishab, what Bishop said. Releasing the first binding before releasing them together. Yes. Yeah, so, so consider releasing username, password, for instance, uh, and getting it out to the world. Um, just as soon as, as soon as coding phase starts and you can get it implemented, get the test tests created, run some interactive tests, then, then, with that, pull request merged and asked that it be released. Uh, because the other incentive for that is um, Git client plugin releases about every three months with new JGit versions. And there's a pending uh, JGit, JGit version uh, 5.11.1 has not yet been delivered in Git client plugins. So we're at the point where I've been testing it for several weeks, it's just fine. Once coding phase starts, there's a great excuse to release one binding and that'll also include JGit 5.11.1 or 5.12 if it's released by then.
Okay. Okay, it's fine by me. I can do it. I can at least work work out the user and password credential binding. Good. So Justin, on your question, um, Bobby, Ramon, and Olivier are backups for security as well. That's perfect. So, so that's part of their responsibility as backup. So if there were a security issue, for instance, something found in, uh, some time ago, we, somebody found an issue in JGit we had to roll because there was a JGIT security issue and we rolled. And, and if that kind of thing happens, the maintainers will be contacted. And usually they'll want to deliver the security fix with nothing else in it except the security fix. I've unfortunately been part of a process like that. <laughs> you've, you've been there, huh? That's good. I've been there with the Jenkins plugin before. <laughs> yep. um, yeah. And I'm, I'm, for specifically kind of thinking about, you know, we're writing out files and stuff like that. So. Right. Well, and we'll that's a good, a good thing for the, the automated tests here is um, we are, the automated tests probably need to, sh to assert that the sensitive information only exists on the disk for as long as it is expected to exist. In other words, after the with credentials block exits, the the sensitive either username, password, or private keys should no longer be on disk. And so yeah. again, that makes an interesting test case for you, Harshit, on how do I check that? You could look at the um, see the Git plugin tests of pipeline code for another example, for different examples of testing pipeline from inside a Jenkins unit test. Um, um, like in credential binding plugin, there is a class name unbinder, which is a callback. So when the pipeline execution is complete, I mean the script the code in the with credential block is completed. The callback is called. So mm -hmm. I am pushing. Yeah, I am pushing the the unbinder function into that, and it will automatically delete the uh, the file that has been created on the disk. Excellent, like and the, I, I like that very much. And I'm such a jaded skeptic. I like it when I have tests that that confirm that. Okay. But but that's that's excellent. That says that yeah. when creating when the credentials binding plugin was created, they thought very carefully about that. Good. And I'm glad you've seen that. <laughs> that was that was going to be one of my questions: is how to, how are they doing that? Mm. Great. Harshit, any other questions from you? Mm, no, I don't have it. No. Um, I have a question, uh, actually, and I just, yeah. So my question is that uh, la uh, from my experience last time, uh, during the community economy, I never thought about uh, giving an estimate on how much time I would take or it would take for us to release a particular feature. So uh, I'm not sure if it's a right exercise, but uh, if if uh, Harshit is going to uh, focus on uh, developing a prototype and then looking at how the test uh, testing framework needs to be modified, then uh, do we need to also answer after uh, doing both of those exercises that how, how long can we take to push one of the features, let's say just the username password binding to uh, production for a gate client plugin release? Do we want to give an estimate so that we know for ourselves that how we're progressing throughout those phases? It seems like a good metric to uh, understand our progress. 
I like that. I think that, yeah, so setting milestones and <clears throat> then say, okay, we think we can, Harsha thinks he can get this much done by this point. Yes. Yeah. yeah and then you can I maybe think, like, yeah. sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Justin. Oh, no, I was just going to say then maybe, you know, for milestones, we can put those kind of in priority order. Um, mm. And so like the freestyle job can be towards the end, mm. um, that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. That'd be nice. So the idea is something like this pipeline with username, password, um, with tests, and then, or maybe it's without tests, just interactive and then same thing tests for that and then release uh, in, or interactive test those kinds of things is that what you're what you're thinking vishab definitely yes functionality then the testing and if we figure out both of them then uh, i think we can have a, an estimate approximate at least Right. Oh, oops, another piece, document. But then uh, what I'm afraid of uh, with this approach, maybe a drawback, I'm not sure, is that if we're focusing on uh, this particular binding and it's uh, testing and then ultimately is that, uh, uh, is it safe for us to leave uh, the planning or maybe the research part of prototyping of uh, SSH? Type of authentication passphrase of uh, private key at a later stage of the project, or should we? Is it something that needs to be explored um, within this phase so that we don't uh, hit a roadblock during the coding phases, or maybe when you're gone during that time? I, and I thought that that Harshit had described that he wanted to do private key explorations during community bonding as well. We are, we're what we are. Where are we in terms of time? We're a week and a half in. So we've got a, another week and a half before. Let's see, Google Summer. Of, let me look at the timeline just to be sure. Is the time June seventh? June seventh coding officially begins. Ah, okay. So we've only got um, we've got just about two weeks before coding begins, right? Because mm. June seven is exactly. two weeks from right now, isn't it? No, two weeks from yesterday. Oh, no, two weeks, from, sorry, roughly two weeks from now. So Harshit, what's, what's your plan in terms of exploration in the next two weeks? So I have, so right now I've decided that I will first focus on the testing part of the user of the user and password uh, binding, and then I will go to the SSH binding and for now, and I will focus on the testing one. So major focus is on testing for me, then I will shift on the SSH binding. Okay. And so, and I think, I think Rishab had a good question. Should we rather focus have you have shift invert that so we have you focus on the private key first to explore it and then come back to testing because for at least my experience with finding ways to automated tests is what it it was quite often it took me a lot longer to find a way to do the test automation whereas if if a rapid exploration of private keys shows a problem that that's probably much more important to us uh, rishab was that that was what I thought you were suggesting as well. Yeah, you're right, Marcus. So. 
so that was that was my 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 thought, Harshi, was if you're willing to consider doing the private key exploration first, that would that would that's probably higher risk to successful project completion than the automated testing is. Also, I mean, like for now, the user and password binding is only working on the Linux. I have not tested in other other systems. Uh, also. Right. So, so if, uh, uh, you want me? I can. I mean, if you want, I can shift to SSH private key. Well, but but I think you've got a good point. Windows is also a big risk, and Windows with username yeah. password is certainly since you're already on username password. That's a that's a good thing to check even before, yeah, before test automation as well. Yeah. Does that, does that seem reasonable to you, Harshu? Bishab, any other, or, or Justin, any other topics? I guess we need to decide on our next time when we're going to meet. That was my next topic. Ah, very good. <laughs> Unless anyone has anything else? No, I, I do. So it's Wednesday morning today. What is your Friday morning like, Harshit and Rishab? So this same time instead of today, Wednesday, but on Friday. It's not a problem for me. Okay. Sorry, Harshit, I didn't hear you. Was that okay for you too? Mm, yeah, it's okay. okay. It's and Justin, uh, for you and me, uh, Thursday evening, is that okay for you? Oh, no. I actually had something go on on Thursday evening. Um, but, but I do want to make sure that you guys still make progress. So like, I don't want to hold people up. Well, and, and we can certainly meet without without one or more of the mentors. It doesn't have mm -hmm. to be, so long as Harshit's here and at least one of the mentors is here, we can go ahead. Yeah. You remind me, I may have something. Yeah, I, I've got something on Wednesday. So if we, if we shifted it later on Friday, your time, Harshit, does that still collide with school schedule? Do you have Friday morning classes? Mm, yeah, but I can take off. <laughs> oh, no, 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 we shouldn't. That would, that would, boy, Google would be so ashamed of us if we had you take time off from school that, that I would probably get all sorts of rebuke. Okay, then let's go ahead with Justin. Let's go ahead with Thursday. Um, yeah. And then, so Thursday for you and me, Friday for, for, Harsh it. then next week, and, and I guess we'll, we can, no, we, we probably can't determine, next, is this day workable for everyone next week? So seven days from now as well. Yes, for me, uh, this is working. And Justin, next Tuesday works for you? Yeah, I was just checking my calendars. <laughs> Personal calendar looks green, so. I think we're good to go for next Tuesday. Great. All right. So I will put us a time for next Tuesday. And put us a time for Thursday. Uh, for, yeah, sorry, the welcome to International Times. <laughs> Friday morning for, for Rishab and for Harshad. And it's Tuesday our time, right? Sorry. Correct. Right. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yes. Shame on me. Right. I, I, I could worry. just call everything out in UTC. Would that be better? <laughs> the calendar works. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you should have invitations in your calendars for 
Uh, now the next is Justin. We need to. I'll send a request to the to the uh, Jenkins Advocacy Group asking that you be granted access to the Jenkins Zoom account so that you can host these sessions when I'm not available. Yeah, that sounds good. And I don't know if you want it to like chat separately, like about administrative things around that or anything like that. Um, happy to do that, or we can figure out how. However, we want to. If there's anything else that I need to know about, but um, I doubt that there's very much. So async Super. also works for me. Excellent. Yeah, I'll I'll probably the things that that are most important I think will come to you from Oleg and the org admin team. Okay. Cool. All right. Thanks, everybody. Anything else before we end? All right. Thanks, Harshit. Excellent progress. Great to see your demo. Thanks very, very much for your exploration. Talk to you in two days. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Bye, everyone.